nighttime setbacks and the water hot water circulation through the building. So I first want to just present you this uh, this graph. It's from February 9th to February 11th, and it's of Georgetown Center. The average kilowatts versus time. So as you can see over here on the left, you have started zero kilowatts, which it never dips. It never dips below 1.2 kilowatts, and that's your base load, which I'll get into. So here you have your electrical consumption between 1.2 kilowatts, and it spikes all the way up to around lunchtime, which I'll get into around 7 kilowatts for this panel, which is just the upstairs uh, offices and mechanical room. So, and here too I have, uh, we have Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And Sunday, or er, Sunday is a good representation of just this hot water heater, which is spiking on all the time, 2.7 kilowatts. It's always spiking on 24-7. And the reason for that is this circulation pump, which is it's a part of your base load, which means it never turns off. And also things that contribute to this base load would be your lights, computers, just small things that are that are left on 24/7 all the time. So I'll get into the I'll get into this uh, the hot water heater and the circulation pump later. But this Sunday chart it just it's good representation because there's no one there's no one in the building at that time. So it's there's for when there's no one in the building there's no reason for that to spike that often, that much, or that often, that high. Is, is there any um, refrigerators? In the, in the uh, staff room? In the staff room. Okay, so I that... I don't have that in the chair, but I was going to mention it. Yeah, so that, I think that needs to be added to the 2.7 kilowatt bike. Because you're seeing it on the weekends as well, and, and overnight, there's a, you know, it's not a consistent spike. Mm -hmm. it, there's some little blip here, right, that, yeah, like, kind of, you know, you can kind of see it, you know, every once in a while, it's a little bit higher, and there's a weird spike here. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, it's not exact science. Maybe they're yeah. using hot water. Well, that too, that could be just down here too, like your base, this is always fluctuating too. It's not always going to be rain at 1.2, like it could be a little bit more, it could be a bit less, and that would affect the whole, the entire spike. Yeah, but a, um, a refrigerator would not... Kind of final, final well, I was going to mention that up here. Like once they get in here, once you get there, once the people get there during the day, at around seven o'clock, that's when all these lights, computers, coffee makers come on. And then I was going to say, a fridge, like the compressor for the fridge, when they start opening around break time or lunch time, that's when the compressor for the fridge would need to come on, and that's what would, in there, that's what would cause a couple of those spikes. Yeah, but but the, the refrigerator would still be going. We would go it would be, yeah. the day. So it would I need to like either be part of this one or part of this one. It certainly would, you know, increase here, but um, the refrigerator yeah. operates. Well, there hard. could be. I could add a lot. I just, I just threw those in just for a couple of examples. Of yeah. Okay. But uh, I just didn't. You know, we're picking the hot water heater and we're saying it's this, but there's little subtleties there that mm -hmm. we just need to mention. Yeah. Certainly well, the hot water heater doesn't need to be on. Where's the fridge? You wouldn't have a look at the hot water heater. You can turn that off. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm yeah. actually going to get into. Yeah. With the opportunity. The fridge is going to be a fridge. But. But yeah, this uh, just uh, it's just two days during the week. These They fluctuate a little bit, but they're pretty consistent Monday to Friday when people are in the building. So, again, you can, you can see when people get there in the morning, they turn on the lights, computers, coffee makers, and then at break time, 9, 9.30, uh, a couple toasters, maybe coffee makers, microwaves, that kind of thing would be causing the spike. And then around lunchtime, um, just that, again, it'd be your fridges, microwaves, coffee makers, same thing. Everyone in the staff room, that'd be all your lighting and that kind of thing. And then as people go back to class or go back to their office, kind of spikes down a little bit. And then maybe afternoon break, they come back, make another coffee, open the fridge a couple times, a couple more spikes. And then as you can see, it, it keeps dipping down. As people go home for the day or in the afternoon, it gets more quiet. And then maybe these couple spikes would be, at the end of the day, the custodian, the, the janitors are in, putting the, uh, the floor cleaners going, causing a couple spikes. Matt, can I cut Yep. Keep going. You don't need to spend that much time on this chart. Okay. Okay. We only have an hour and 20 minutes. Good. Um, and then this is, a, this is a dead log we put on the circulation pump just to prove and to see that it never shuts off. So we started monitoring this Wednesday and then it ran 100% 
all the time until we collected the data. So just just illustrates that it's on all the time. So an opportunity for this would as that pumps on all the time, it results the hot water tank has to spike on regularly, 24-7, just to, to keep up that demand for the hot water. As this pump's always going, you're going to run into hot water. So these spikes, this is, again, that base load. So this pump's always going here. And once you need, once the hot water demand, once the hot water, well, the hot water demand's always on. But once you need hot water, it spikes up to, this is just the hot water heater. This yep, is the same yep. chart as the... What? Yelmet. Yelmet, yeah. It's like a yelmet car on the point. This, first thing is losing the energy. These spikes are happening 24-7 because that pump is always on. So limiting this to just just having that pump on when the building's occupied would only limit these to, say, 7 till 6, 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. So you would save tons of money. And it's, yeah, it's, we estimate that it would save roughly $1,000 a year. That's just a, your energy of your electrical consumption for that. For is that, that is that the number you crunched or is that the one that you I, told me? <laughs> so so I'll need to crunch. I'll I need did, to you need to crunch that, that from you. Yeah, I did. I did a rough calculation. On yeah. that chart there, what what's the time frame there? How just, how, just this three hours. That's three this hours. This is just the same as. So it's on about fifty percent of the time. If these spikes, 50, 55. it's on 50, 55 percent of the time. Fifty five percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. It's a fifty five percent duty cycle. Thirty five hundred watts. And the pump is on all the time. So if we limit that pump, the duty cycle right now for the pump is 100%. If we limit that by half or whenever the building's not occupied, then it would limit, it would reduce this duty cycle 55% down to 27, 25. Oh, so yeah, well, you'd see tons of savings. It's occupied less than half the time, so. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Huge. And so you're saying six minutes though? What? The students are done at 3.34. Well, by the time everyone go, there's like a chance, there's, there's going to be people there so until... So the water in the line would still be hot for about an hour or two hours after the pump is turned off? It takes hours for the water in those lines to cool, cool it down before you... You could, you could screw with that, the time frame, but I'm just using 7 until 6. Just, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, we'll leave, leave that up to the, the building, what, yeah. what they want to say. And um, this... Uh, the hundred and fifty dollars. I'm I'm concerned about that now because I had planned on using the lighting timer, but it sounds like we might that might not even be feasible um, based on the cost. So we might have to increase that hundred and fifty dollars to buy a new one of these. Because we might have to buy a new one. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, actually, it would make more sense to buy the buy a new GPS one and put it on the lights and reuse this one. Um, because we're going to have to buy one anyway, so we may as well buy the one with the GPS and switch it over to the You don't mean GPS. You mean like a, a clock, an atomic clock. You, you, you don't mean GPS. It's not finding a location. It's just a, well, I forget what they call it. It's, it, it's just connected to the Internet. Yeah. And that's what I mean by GPS, sorry. It's just connected to the Internet. A, a box that can connect to the Internet so it knows like what time. Like clock radio collects, connects to time central somewhere. It doesn't even use the Internet. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but if we did get to reuse this, it would just it would make the payback a lot short. It would make the payback a lot shorter than and to actually go and buy this device. Yeah. So it's okay. a it's a great opportunity that way. And then we get into uh, program with thermostats. So currently, there's 33. Program with their, or thermostats in the building with no programmable capabilities. So the set the set points for those ranged from I think 18 degrees somewhere all the way up to like 23 degrees. Yeah. So, yeah. So that would just by not by not setting those back at night, the boiler just is working when it doesn't need to to provide the heat for those for those set points. And here's just a little chart. If you were to Lower the if you lower the temperature by one degree every night in each in each of those thermostats, the total energy potential energy savings for the whole year would would be two percent. You'd save two percent if you lowered every thermostat by one degree for an eight hour period at night. So and then once you if you lower two degrees, save four percent, all the way up to five degrees, you can save up to ten percent of your total potential energy savings for for a year. And you don't want to, 
five is basically the limit. You don't want you don't want to lower it too much. You don't want to go too much lower than that because then you get into the like condensation problems on the windows and that kind of thing. So, but if you lower every time every thermostat by five degrees, you can save up to ten percent of total energy savings. I don't have a I don't have an actual number that they save. Well, what we can do is we could do um, we could do an example of um, I can get the first years to do a hot two thousand analysis of whatever home they have, and they can, we can say, set it at 20 degrees instead of 19, and we'll see the difference. This, this chart actually, it came, I, that was on my last, the last check-in or whatever, the, it had an example of using 10, saving 10 gigajoules, it, it just, it was just a good example, it's pretty clear, so I could throw that in, but. Okay, I'd have to take a look at it again. Yeah. Um, um, you could also start, before you get into this, you could um, show the chart there that Brian had. Yeah, no, I yeah, I didn't see that so So nah. just, just get that in, in this yeah. queue of, of slots. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um but yeah, with setting back the temperature at night, we proposed a couple of options. Uh one would be uh replacing each thermostat with a programmable with an oxygen sensor. So that'd be just a programmable thermostat replacing on the wall and with an occupancy sensor so that as soon as pe people walk into the into the room then the heat turns on. And Airtron quoted those for $1,000 each. So you could replace, replace those 33 with a thousand that you'd be looking at over 33 grand if you were to go that route. Or you could install a building loop uh, outside air temperature sensor on the boiler at a cost of $6,000. So what that would do would monitor the outside air temperature and also like the building, if the building's occupied or unoccupied, and it would turn down the boiler temperature so that even if you did have manual thermostats that no one set back at night, if it's if it's still calling for that 23 degrees, it the boiler just wouldn't let it heat wouldn't let it heat the space. So you in that way you are creating a nighttime setback without the cost of thousand dollars replacing all those thermostats. If you're looking for a number to go with that, their average uh, fifty-seven thousand dollars is their average heating cost over 2012 and 2013. Fifty-seven thousand dollars. So if you're going to save them ten percent, it's fifty-seven hundred dollars. Gives you a lot of room to work with. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. During the daytime, though, we're not going to. No. We're not going to be lowering the temperature. Yeah, just just the. At night time. Just the yeah. night time set back. Eight hours at night. That's what this chart goes by. Yeah, I should throw that in there. Oh, yeah. That's not. And of yeah, course, we want to. Eight, eight hours per night. Yeah. Eight hours per night. And of course, we want to turn it off in the summer, too. So there's another set. Right. Yeah. Like, between the two, that there's, there's $15,000 right there. Mm -hmm. Like, is someone not going to ask what is an individual thermostat still going to do for them in the room? Because if the outdoor sensor, man, I talked about the outdoor sensor, lowers. It's still going to be calling for heat, but the boiler won't let. It heat up to so it'll only let it heat up to what you're getting at is you got that one faculty instructor in his office who wants 23 degrees. Can he get 23 degrees with his thermostat now? If the I, I would say if the building is in Heating if mode? it's in the scheduled um, time. scheduled time period, as long as he's not in there after hours, he can probably still get up to 23. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's maybe not going to work like that. Uh, yeah, I, I think we almost need to. Pull out these options. There's almost not enough detail on these two options. Um, I, just didn't, I could make it more size. Yeah. To make the the programmable thermostats, um, occupy sensors also does the lighting. Um, so there's a little bit more to it for that thousand dollars. You you you're connecting them to the back net system. You're able mm -hmm. to take control from yeah, the back I, net system. I could just say like that include that includes all that. Yeah. Or, rather than. And, and, slide, and huh? they, they, they've tried, they've done a lot of work, well, I guess it's totally different, they've done a lot of pneumatic, um, which is like compressed air upgrades, they did that at Charlottetown Center, done it at Tourism Culinary Center, so we could probably, um, Justin has actually asked me yesterday to kind of look at that and see how much money they're actually saving with these programmable thermostats. So, we could also kind of uh, touch on that a little bit. Okay. And yeah, there, there's your. Yeah, there's a thing I just did that actually. Uh, how are we doing for time?